Hello, my name is Tech, this is my channel Bootlosophy, and today I'll be looking at the Echo Vitrus 2 Chelsea boot. Cement construction, comfortable, maybe not so cheap. Echo is a Danish brand, a high street manufacturer of cement construction boots and shoes. They have an extremely wide range and sell through their own websites as well as in their own branded high street and shopping centre stores as well as in some department stores. They own their own tanneries in Europe, Thailand, Indonesia and China. Their tanneries don't rely on uh, just supplying their own shoe factories but also they supply to manufacturers of fashion, sports and car industries. Apparently they invest heavily in the environmental impact of the tanning process which can only be good. The shoes themselves are made in Portugal, Slovakia and Asia, including countries like Thailand, Indonesia, Vietnam and China. Such is globalism in the business model of what's ultimately a global brand. This is the Vitrus Roman numeral 2 Chelsea boot. I bought this about two years ago when I was short of a casual Chelsea boot, uh, particularly in a suede. As you can see, it's a very attractive, sleek boot. It's a shorter Chelsea, uh, when you compare them to stalwarts like R.M. Williams, but that fits into its sleek design. This suede has a short, smooth nap and the tan colour, almost brown, they come in a number of different colours. This tan colour is pretty versatile and you can wear it with denim, chinos, and I think even formal trousers in a variety of colours. It's very light, one of the characteristics of being cement constructed. It has a comfortable, grippy sole, lots of shock absorption. I'll talk about the construction and shock absorption later, but it is a very comfortable boot. Unfortunately, I haven't really worn it as much as it deserves. You can see it's still pretty clean and unmarked. After I bought this boot, I discovered Goodyear Welted Heritage Boots with my Thursday Captain boot as my first buy. Since then, I've been buying a lot of Heritage boots and the process of breaking them in properly, as well as enjoying them in a good rotation of boots, has meant that some of the more comfy and older boots that I have are feeling a little ignored. But these aren't my only Echo boots and I used to favour them as a brand because I knew that they were of pretty good quality and as comfy as heck. I knew that from past experience. I guess now that I know about heritage style boots, their pricing I think is a little high in comparison but I'll go into that later. In the meantime, I'd love it if you could click on the like and subscribe buttons below. I'm planning to review a whole load of boots on this channel, so clicking on the like and the subscribe buttons will help me in getting this algorithm out to show this video to more people. And you'll be reminded to watch my other videos as I upload them. Now, taking a look at the construction method of the Vitrus 2 boot. It is cement constructed, where the sole is brewed onto the upper of the boot. More accurately, they have direct injection PU soles that are um, directly injected the uppers when the PU mixture is hot and molten. The theory is that it's more resilient than just glue and should not peel off ever. The method of construction makes the boot very light. It's only 488 grams per boot, 488. That's less than a kilogram for the pair. Highly flexible, shock absorbent and long lasting and hard wearing. Yes, I know, I haven't worn these boots much at all. But I have owned other Echo shoes and boots, and I know that they've lasted me years. Of course, there is a critical downside. They're not resolable. If you ever punctured the outsole or damaged them in some way, or wore them out, you can't take them to a cobbler to resole them. You just have to throw them away. Having their own tanneries is also a major advantage. It means that they can control quality practically from paddock to factory. There's absolutely nothing wrong with quality control here. Their leathers are a major marketing brand for them. Perhaps not of the quality of CF State's tannery in the UK. This one is corrected, highly treated, but it is attractive, smooth, and it's water resistant. As far as I can tell, they don't crease that much and can be easily cleaned. The uppers are lined with a nylon material uh, that's soft to the touch and adds to the comfort. The goring, that's this elastic at the sides, is resilient in its elasticity. I, I can't see it getting flabby after many wears, which can happen to lower quality elastic goring. The last is interesting. 
It's a little wider than I'd like at the waist, but it is clearly suited to the average foot and it doesn't pinch anywhere. There was no breaking in required. It was comfortable when I tried this on at the store and comfortable as soon as I got them home. There is a single pull tab at the back. I'm used to Australian Chelsea boots that have two pull tabs, front and back. The, the idea being that pulling on both helps to widen the collar so that it's easier to pull, pull them onto your foot. I mentioned the waist was wider than I would like. To me, Chelsea boots need to be snug at the heel, the waist and the instep. Having no laces to tighten, it's this snugness all around the bend of your feet that stops a Chelsea boot from flinging off every time you take a step. Did I mention the uppers are water resistant? The injection mold at PU sole means that there shouldn't be any weak spots between the sole and the uppers to let water in. Combined with the suede having been treated and being water resistant, makes for a useful wet weather suede boot. Not winter necessarily, a rainy day. It does spot after having waded through a rain puddle, but the marks can be easily brushed and cleaned off. And so, what to clean with? Not being a particularly thick leather, it doesn't ever feel like it needs conditioning. To be honest, it's probably been treated so much that it doesn't lose much natural oil if it has any left. One of the things I always do is look at what the manufacturer recommends for leather care. In this case, Echo make their own suede cleaning and conditioning products. They have foam cleaners, a suede and nubuck cleaning kit, eraser and brush kit, as well as suede and nubuck uh, roll-on conditioners. I'll leave some links to their cleaning and conditioning products in the, in the description area below this video. What Echo tells you to do is to first use their suede eraser to rub off, literally rub off, any dirt and marks and use the accompanying hard brush to brush nap and fibres to remove the loose dirt after the ground has been rubbed off. Then, they recommend using their foam cleaner to clean the suede. You pump spray the foam onto a clean cloth and rub it all over in soft circular movements and then you let it dry. If you need to, you can then use their roll-on suede and nubuck conditioner to restore colour and treat the nap so that it softens again. You can buy Echo shoes in almost any shopping centre anywhere in the world. As I said at the beginning, you can buy them in their branded stores and shopping centres or anywhere on the high streets and you can get them online off their own website. I would recommend that you go to a store to check your sizing. In my experience, depending on the style and last, sizing on Echo shoes and boots can vary. In this case, I'm a European 41.5 on the Brannock device and I can wear anything in Echo from a 41 to a 42. This boot is a 41 and it fits me perfectly. Most of my Echo shoes, not all, most are European 41, but I have been known to fit into Echo 41.5s and even Echo 42s, a wide variation. The fit in this size is good. I mentioned earlier about the width of the waist. If I'd got half a size smaller, the length I think would have been too short. Conclusion, go and try them on in store. Don't muck around. As for break-in, none. Comfortable immediately, supple, flexible, soft on the feet. Of course the thinness of the uppers help, but so does the tanway. The leather comes out already supple and flexible. These boots are extremely versatile. You can wear them with most casual outfits, from rugged to smart casual. I think they fit into business casual environments very easily. I wear them with jeans, five pocket pants in brown, grey or blue, they all go with this brown. I wear them with chinos in khaki, black, grey, white and even blue. I wear them with smart pants. They team with a t-shirt or polos. They match um, collared button down shirts as well as more formal button up long sleeve shirts. I wouldn't wear them with a suit though. But a blazer or a sports coat over a button-up shirt and khaki pants, I think that'd be fine. As I say, very versatile. Okay, so now to what the value is. Gosh, value is such a subjective thing, isn't it? These cost uh, about 300 Aussie dollars list price. They are on sale or discounted every now and then, but let me put that into context. A pair of RM Williams costs nearly $600. A pair of Blundstones, less than $200. A pair of Red Wing Iron Rangers in Australia, about $560. So price-wise, it's in the ballpark. But the Iron Williams and Red Wings are pretty solid, world-class, Goodyear welted footwear. The Blunnies are fashionable, but solid working boots. 
The Echoes are fashionable and they're comfy and they're extremely versatile, but I'm not sure you easily put their mass-produced nature into the same category as RM Williams and RM Ranges. So what's the value? I guess it's what the value is to you. I didn't buy them at $300. I bought them on sale at less than $180. Now that was, I think, my value. I wanted a good-looking, fashionable boot, affordable. I appreciated the comfort, which I knew about, and I probably would have spent up to $200, maybe $250 for them. I knew these were not going to last me forever, and I knew they were not resellable. I knew the leather wasn't up to the standards of Charles Stead and the like. Uh, feeling nice at ease, though. I accepted those cons. If you liked the fashionable design, knew that they were immediately comfortable, appreciated you could go let, get a lot of wear out of them because they were so versatile, appreciated they were easy to care for and very attractive, well then maybe 300 is the right value for you. Overall, you get what you pay for, but you also pay for what you look for. So that's the Echo Vitrus 2 Chelsea boot. Now, keep an eye out for a video I'm going to do where, depending on where you stand, I'm going to either destroy these boots or amp them up a couple of notches. A couple of months ago, I got a free pair of RM Williams Comfort Craftsman Chelsea boots in their tobacco suede. I said free, but actually I traded in Qantas Frequent Flyer points for them. And as we are in this COVID era, who knows when I'd ever use those points again. So yeah, I didn't spend any money. Anyway, having a pair of RMs in a similar coloured suede from C.F. Stead's Tannery in, in England, probably the world's best producer of suede, I decided I now had a better quality suede tan-coloured Chelsea boot. But what I was missing was a rugged wax suede Chelsea boot. So in a video I'll film later, I'm going to experiment and wax these Echo Chelsea boots, adding some burnishing and a layer of wax. You don't want to miss that. Watch me uh, destroy or improve these boots. Click on the subscribe button below so that you're notified when I upload videos and catch that one when I put it up. Well, thanks for watching. Not the most interesting boot for boot collectors out there, but it is part of the pantheon of boots that people might buy. It's an easily enjoyable boot. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you did, please click on the like button below it helps my channel get recognized in the YouTube universe, and that helps me. I've got plenty more boot-related videos to come, so I hope to see you soon.